everyone, my name is Rebecca and I make beautiful things. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a speed paint of the siren from the episode Jabaro um, from Netflix's Love, Death, and Robots Season 3. Um, I was gonna do a voiceover explaining my process of what I'm doing, but I started, I said I'm doing a sketch of the siren and then I didn't know what else to say because I'm just doing a sketch of the siren so <laughs> I think I'll just talk about whatever comes to mind um, I haven't actually seen this episode I've seen the siren um, just around the internet and I thought she was super beautiful I saw a few clips on YouTube and she's really scary but the way that they do the uh, camera movement and the sound design in this this episode is gorgeous so um but i i haven't seen a lot of love death and robot episodes because some episodes are are really cute and really cool like the yogurt episode um but some are horrifying <laughs> and you never really know which one you're getting i guess i could look it up but whatever i think Love, Death, and Robots is a really cool idea. I think it, it it's a really creative and interesting series, but yeah. Scary things usually aren't for me. I'm more into beautiful things, <laughs> as you can tell by my YouTube channel. Um, this is the first digital speed paint on my YouTube channel. My first video is of a watercolor painting I did and then my next two videos after that are fish tanks and now this is a digital speed paint. Um, you may be wondering why I have some fish tank videos and some art videos on this channel um, and that's why I'm not saying that I have an art channel, I have a beautiful things channel because as someone with ADHD, I have a really hard time sticking with things. Um, if I did just a purely art YouTube channel, I think I would have a lot of trouble with that. So I'm doing this experiment where I try not to limit myself and don't try to stick to just one thing and just do whatever beautiful thing I want to do and film it and make a YouTube video out of it so that's the experiment obviously it's early days but I'm hoping the the variation will make me not get bored of it such that I can stick with it which for me anyway is really difficult I have a hard time sticking with things something about a lack of dopamine I don't know but yeah uh, I'll talk about what I'm doing just a little bit, so I'm just doing the line work right now. Every once in a while you can see like this random straight line coming out of nowhere, which is super annoying. I actually talked to Procreate Support about it for quite a while. Uh, they don't know why it's happening really, but it seems to be happening with the new iPads. My iPad's really old, it's a first generation iPad Pro or fourth generation? The first iPad Pro that came out, that's what I have. Um, but this issue actually didn't start until I plugged it into my M1 uh, iMac. So I don't know what it is, I, I plugged my, my iPad into the wall instead of my, my iMac. And restarted it and the problem went away so you'll notice once I get to coloring the problems basically gone so I don't know what that's all about but I'm happy because uh, part of what I do is I illustrate children's books as well as do commissions you guys can commission me if you want um, and so my iPad is pretty important yeah okay so here we go now we're coloring uh, so the the way that I've decided to color this picture, I color different pictures differently because again ADHD. Um, 
So the way I decided to do this one is I started with my my line art and then just now I colored the line art so some of it's red, some of it's blue, some of it's a light kind of gray um, and then I merge everything down, the line art as well as the base color that I just put down and then I go over everything kind of in a more painterly style. Um, so that the line work, the line art kind of blends a little bit more into the painting, and it's less of a less an obvious difference between the lines and coloring in. You'll you'll see. Um, that's something that was super interesting about learning digital when I first started, a really long time ago. Um, is learning like what kind of traditional media am I wanting to kind of emulate because you can go so crazy detailed and, and realistic with digital and so knowing when to stop and what to do is is a big deal so this is kind of like if I did line work with like colored pencils and then went in with watercolor and then went over everything again with colored pencils is kind of how I think about it. So that's how I do a lot of my illustrations. If you go to my Instagram, um, Rebecca, is it, yeah, Rebecca dot, like a period, dot Ellen dot heart at, on Instagram. I'll put a link in the description for my Instagram. Uh, you'll see all the different kinds of digital styles I do, but this is just one of them. Oh yeah, see, here we go. Now they're all merged onto one layer. So, I'll, yeah, you can see things going over the, the lines and it just makes it feel a little bit more cohesive. Right now I'm using a brush. I think it's called a shoal brush. It's kind of like a rough sort of chalk pastel feeling brush on Procreate. And it, yeah, it lets you have a lot of really nice texture and it's not super opaque right away. You can kind of see the colors come through. I thought that was really nice. I didn't really do a good job of making it seem like she's wearing a mask, unfortunately. Um, her character design is she's wearing like this gold mask and then underneath is her true self. Um, so this is supposed to be a mask, but <laughs> she just looks more, um, real than she was supposed to, but I still like it. There's so many different colors, um, happening. And I tried to make it cohesive, so make the face not so different from her really cool ornamented head scarf thing. Um, and so I think later I... I kind of move the colors down and, and try to make it a little more cohesive because right now her face is pretty orange, but oh well. Um, yeah, I don't know, this is like <laughs> a pretty long video and one of my first times doing voiceovers, so I'm not really sure what to say. Right here I'm just trying to give the, the spheres kind of more depth and adding some bouncing light from the gold spheres onto the more pearlescent ones so that they look like they're right next to each other. I play a lot with the background for this one. At the end of the video you'll see I actually have several different versions of it um, pop up for you guys to look at because I couldn't choose which one I liked best. Um, there's the eyes. Yeah, I was like, do I make the water black? Do I make it orange? After this video was even made, after I finished putting it all together, I went back and tweaked some things and changed it even more because I, I'm a perfectionist. What can I say? That's something. Um, that I should probably talk about in a different video too is perfectionism 
I, I said that I illustrate children's books. I've I've tried illustrating, like I've obviously, I've succeeded in illustrating children's books, but I've always had this problem where what I'm happy with, like the quality that I think is good, is just so much higher than my clients needs for what they want so I end up putting so much more effort and time into the piece so that I just get so burnt out by the end and I don't even like it's not even worth the amount of money I get I just don't get enough money for the amount of time I put in so a big struggle of mine has been trying to figure out how to make it simpler, make the style simpler, make my process more streamlined so that it actually makes fiscal sense to illustrate children's books. One thing that I realized quite recently is that when it comes to doing art, there's you're kind of putting on two hats. Initially, you're a designer and you're designing the style um, if you're, you know, if you're designing the characters, what do they look like, how do their faces move, all that sort of thing, like what's the vibe that you're going for, and then once that's done, you're the artist or the illustrator, and you're actually doing the work, but the design is already done, you're just implementing it, and what I realized was the designer part of me when I was working on children's books was a lot more inspired and and interested and so I would design this style that I was like oh this would work so well with this book but then when it came to illustrating it it was just way too complicated and so I've realized that I just need to not be a designer when I illustrate children's books. I need to have a style that I stick with and that's the way that I illustrate children's books. So take the designing aspect out of it, like I'm already done, don't do it again, and just focus on the process and I'm being an illustrator, not a designer. And then on my personal projects like this, I can be a designer and I can enjoy that process, but it doesn't make fiscal sense to do that when I'm illustrating children's books. So that was a big aha moment for me, which I'm really excited about because it's it allows me to not only realize why I was having so much trouble and why I was burning out so intensely, but it, it makes a difference between my personal work and my work work. So that's cool. Ah, here we go. Here's where I, I'm adding... Um, some bluish purpley tint over the entire image which makes her blend in a little better with her head her headdress because her headdress has a lot of cool blues and purples as well as some orange but mostly it's cool and her face was just too warm it didn't look like it actually matched and so now there's a little bit more cool in her face and it looks a lot more cohesive but it's still, there's still a lot of warm elements which tie in really well to the background, I think, and to the, the cool, like, sparkles I put around her. I think it kind of looks like sparks, you know? Like there's a forest fire around her and she's just in the water, kind of ominous. It's pretty cool. Oh yeah, here I'm, I'm adding... This is <laughs> the best part of any portrait, is adding the... The brightest highlights it just makes it totally come to life usually I put a highlight in the eye to make it look shiny you know people usually do that but I tried for this one and I just didn't feel like it fit I end up making the bottom kind of gold ring right around her pupil I end up adding a little bit of white there but I thought it was really striking just to have that circle staring back at you kind of reminded me of uh, that book by um, 
is Stephanie Meyer. The one with the aliens that come down. They turned it into a, a movie. I forget what it was called now, but the way you could tell the aliens were there is that um, they had a, a ring around their pupil. Looked really cool in the movie. It so kind of reminded me of that, which I thought was pretty neat. Just doing my last finishing touches. I think there's a quite a bit of tweaking here. Just to see what it looks like at the very end. And here you are. There's one version, and then there's two more. So thanks for listening, everybody. Hope you have a good day. Bye!